Welcome to the Brush Strokes Autumn Series. Thank you for joining me and in this video I'll be sharing my brush strokes where each stroke bring the autumn colors to life. Get ready to immerse yourself in the warmth and the vibrancy of the fall. Throughout this video I'll be demonstrating the process of creating an autumn landscape painting. I will showcase the different stages of the artwork from the initial sketch to the final touches while explaining the significance of each brush stroke and color choice. So grab your brushes and let's embark on the artistic journey together. Before I'll start the lesson, I would like to say thank you once again and I really want you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be the first one to get the notification of the classes. Let me introduce you with what material I will be using for this lesson. I have some watercolor brushes. You can go with any brushes you have, but make sure they will be round brushes. I have the tube paints. If you don't have the tube ones, you can always use the palette ones, whatever is available for you. You can also use the school supply watercolor palettes for your practice. And then once you get confident with your watercolor landscapes, then you can invest a little bit more for professional use. So for today's colors, it's all about warm colors to bring the beauty of autumn shades. I will be going with ochre, red, orange, yellow. You can go with all your color choice, but keep it all in warm colors. So this is my palette, which I use for another painting. I will be using the same one because it already have some warm colors along with few cool colors of blue and purple so i will use the same one and i will add more paint in the same palette before i'll start with my painting i want to sketch a very light basic um, horizon line a little bit of the mountains in the back and to create the perspective view of a lake i will add this template for you so if you are not confident for your drawing you can always just take out the print and trace it. I want to create my horizon somewhere not exactly in the middle of the paper but just below. So I'm giving a very light horizontal line to create the division in between sky and my water. I will add very loose mountains in the background. Before we will start with our painting, we will start with wet on wet technique. I'm not gonna show you the demonstration of what is wet on wet because I hope you already knew that. But in case if you're absolute beginner and you got this video, I just want to tell you wet on wet is the technique where you use a lot of water. Wet your paper with a clean water and then whatever color you wish to add as your first layer you will apply so for me i will go with a little bit of uh, just very very light blue this is called wet on wet so we will add more water less paint just to create a little light tint on the paper The similar color because I want to create this part as the lake so I will go with the same direction is different because this is the lake so I'm moving my brush in a horizontal direction for the sky you might have noticed that I didn't follow any direction I just randomly add my brush strokes in a diagonal diagonal way and it's fine if I'm going a little bit inside my mountain because my value of color is super light that once it will get dry it will not be noticeable and I can easily bring another color on top of it. So that's it for my first layer. You need to wait for this to dry completely before you add another colors and this might take around five to ten minutes. If you want to use any kind of a hair dryer or air dryer you can always use that. 
but make sure that when you are gonna use some kind of a dryer these lines might just flew away and those will leave the marks it's good to just leave it on its own um, wait for five ten minutes have a cup of coffee and then come back to your painting now while i'm waiting for this layer to dry i'm taking a little bit of indigo color and just gonna apply over here because i want to create a bit of gray tones for my mountains and i might be mixing my gray with a little bit of orange to create the natural tones you can change the brush size also you can go with a medium size brush if you want to i will be going with the uh, number six and before i will start with my mountain i'm going to create my nice natural more uh, warm tones so i will go with some orange some red blue and the moment i feel that okay yeah this is something i want i will just use that so better to enjoy and do your mixing on your own and go with your own what color you feel to do it i think i like this color maybe i can add a little bit more orange yes that's perfect for me this looks good right now let me try on the paper and then we will decide yes this looks beautiful and that's what exactly i was looking for so as you can see it has a lot of water right now my background is not completely dry and just trying to add everywhere i'm not focusing right now the front and the back i'm just adding the color right now taking some water just try to have more translucent and soft look to my edges Perfect. very transparent just try to keep it and this also you know if you are using the right paper means 100% uh, cotton or 300 GSM cold press paper you will be able to work in a better way So at this point, I am just waiting for my layers to get dry and I am going to add just few more. Oh, this is a nice yellow color, but it's too much yellow. So I need to just make it a bit soft. I'm using a little gray color on top of it. Just wait for this to dry and then we will do our next. I'll take the tissue, I'll just gonna dab some of the areas where I have a lot of big puddles of water and create a little texture of the clouds. And I think this looks good for now. Let's wait for at least five to 10 minutes and we will come back. Wherever I feel that I need to remove the color, extra paint, extra pigments, I'm just gonna do it now before it gets dry. Perfect, so now it's time to wait for 10 minutes and then we will see you after a short break. So just to speed up my process, I did use hair dryer and make my first layer completely dry. And you can feel that my paper is just getting a little bumpy, so I'm gonna remove the tape, I'm gonna stretch it again, and I'm gonna put it back. This is happening in this brand of the paper but if you are using archies you will not have this issues because that will most of the time that will remain completely stretched so let's start with our next layer and for the next layer i will use my palette 
I can you can use any palette you have you don't need I am not very particular about the brands but yes there are few which are my favorite but for now as learning process you can always use any brand you can or you have at home you need you don't have to buy any even if you have acrylic paint just uh, dilute the consistency add lots of water in few drops of acrylic paint and they will work just like watercolor now i'm going to use a bit smaller brush so i can work a bit more closely on my mountains for this i will go with some brown i'm just gonna take some brown mix it with water i think mixing it a bit little bit more with orange now on the side if you will notice and if you can see i'm just trying to first give some cracks and trying to work on my pencil line this is the one which is in the front so I'm gonna just first I'm gonna add this take a little water just spread some of the color on top of it and somewhere just water and even I'm gonna leave some areas to show the base color. So it's good to leave the space. I know normally in the school life, old school, we always have the teachers are constantly saying, don't leave the space, don't leave any white, white space. But for watercolor, you need to leave the space. You need to leave the natural highlights. You can always add white on top of it, but it will be good if you can leave some as the natural color. Now for the next layer, I'm going to use a little bit of gray, mixing with brown. I'm going to work the one which is in the back, starting with the outlining, adding some cracks on top of it first. Just make sure that you are not mixing with the previous mountain. Keeping my bristles flat on the surface and just I think that looks good okay take some tissue just dab a few uh, I was not able to leave a lot but maybe I can add some dark value as the oh yeah this looks good hopefully it will you can see on screen better let's do the next one and so on we will complete the same way all the mountains for this one i'm changing the direction to the other side and adding more darker value just pushing it towards the okay this looks really good the same thing I'm gonna do some brown without using the water and moving my brush taking a bit darker brown good perfect i want to have a little bit of highlight in this corner so i'm going to just remove some of the color so far looks great let's work on the next step which will be we will add similar colors on these areas with a mixture of yellow I'll go with some yellow ochre color. Along with some orange later on. But first let's... A 
as the first layer we will just add some dabs of color Okay, that's too dark in case if you have this issue that you accidentally use a lot of pigments just quickly take the water and dilute it with the water now it's time to wait again and wait for the layers to dry before we will do the next step if you want to remove some of the extra paint you can definitely go for it take the tissue and dab it This area is completely dry. I want to create a little bit of bushes in the corner in the on the horizon. So I'm going to take some orange, some brown, take water and on the horizon, I'm going to just add just few dabs so you can just use dabbing technique straight horizon line and then dabs just visualize that there are so many trees on the horizon some big some small just to create the dabbing effect and you can use a little bit of green if you want to but uh, mix that green with orange and then you can apply so it won't be very solid green that's it I'll just wait for this to dry completely before I'll add another layer I will take some tissue and dab some of the areas darker shade of brown and red I'm gonna add some flicks with some distance so this is like you need to try to do two three times depending on how wet your paper is and the moment you feel that okay yes now I'm able to get the effect of the bushes and the on the horizon then you can just stop so right now I think it looks more like because before I think I have a lot of water on my paper that's why it was not making sense you need to wait for your process you need to wait at least five ten minutes to dry and then you can work on the next layer oh that's too dark Okay, so here I'm gonna just stop and wait for the layer to completely dry and then I'm gonna come back to show you the next step now at this point I have all the colors which is red yellow brown and orange and I will start working on my third layer the third layer means I will be using less water and more pigments and I think before I'll start with my trees on both the corners I should finish working on my river 
or on my ocean so for that I'm gonna take ocean blue blue color along with a little bit of green so I can have a nice pretty teal or turquoise kind of a shade so I'm gonna take some green very very little amount and some blue take some water mix it well I'm using the medium size of the brush okay, that colors look really nice yes so this is a perfect let's try yes this looks really nice so I'm gonna make my horizon a bit dark and I'm gonna start adding my layers and ripples in the water so where you feel that you need to create a very light effect you can leave some of the areas and where you need to use darker color you can completely cover that cute this is how it looks like for now i am not gonna do dark i will wait for this layer to dry and then i'm going to add more ripples if needed and uh, if you accidentally have covered all the space quickly take the tissue and remove some as a highlights the area oh that's too dark let's quickly take the water and blend it it looks nice but was let me try more dark color with less water and more pigments on the horizon to create more depth now over here you can see I'm just taking the pigments because my paper is still wet and it's mixing with my horizon and going a bit up so let it be it's good you know that's the beauty of watercolor let it be and we will try to come back again if you are using little by little you are still in control to fix your mistake longer strokes longer longer ripples thin and long clean your brush thoroughly just remove all the extra water and just spread Oh, I love this one this looks really nice and I can push them a bit more so they will give me more of the trees and the bushes effect on the horizon and I can work again on top of it with some other color so I think that's it for now I can just wait I have to wait for this to dry again and then I can do this back. Do let me know, do comment how your painting look like. Are you able to do it uh, with me or you are just enjoying the process? Would love to know your feedback. Would love to know what exactly you are looking to learn. It's an online platform, easy to do it at home. And if you are in Bahrain, and want to do the on uh, in-person classes you can always book the classes if you wish to do online private session you can always email and let me know your suitable days to suitable timings and I can try to arrange the session with you so so far this is how it looks I'm very happy and feel more like yeah this is what I want Wherever I want to remove the color, I'm just going to remove. And we'll see you after this layer gets dry. Now I want to create a tree effect. So I'm just using my pencil and I'm just giving the line of the trunk. Which will be starting from here, going up. And I think that's it. The other side will be same going all the way and on these areas I want to create some kind of a rocks 
when you don't have any i don't have any picture it's just my imagination um, when you have a reference then definitely you can follow the reference go with the reference but if you just have your idea that i want to create something which inspired and look like a fall or give me the fall feeling so then you will go with your own imagination so start with the mountains and the ocean and a few lands and now i want to add some trees as well so for that i'm going to just add the tree trunk on both the sides some rocks and maybe i can create some kind of a bushes which are growing from here but we are not able to see so for that purpose i need a smaller brush and i will go with the darker values means dark shades of browns and black because i already have if i have decided this before i have definitely used the masking fluid to cover this area but i just thought for this right now so i will take my brown from my palette and make a nice consistency it's not very um, translucent it needs to be dark i'm gonna add on top of it take it all the way up the same thing on the other side And taking a little bit of black now this time the colors um, are more pigmented we are not using a lot of water like I'm just and now I'm gonna add some texture with the lines okay I will come back again after once this is dry because I think I should do the leaves effect first while I'm waiting for that to dry I'll just add the colors of my rock Okay, that's perfect looks good and it needs more depth but I will add it later so far I'm happy let's take the nice big mop brush and take a nice red like a lot of red with some yellow and orange so start with the red first and let's see Ooh, that's super dark and looks so nice i'm gonna add the blobs of paint so orange looks good let's take a little bit just add some splatters in the corner oh that's a lot but let's see a few small drops few just a small and clean your brush take some water take yellow color lots of water and yellow do the same thing on the other side with some bright yellow for leaves you can add some red if you want so it will automatically turn into orange 
this is something fun right you can enjoy the process instead of having a pressure of to copy something completely you can always try to do different things follow the same steps but go with your own colors instead of autumn if you want to create greens go with greens pink color or any other color you want so let's take a little bit of water just put some splatters of yellow in this corner okay that is not coming too much but let me try okay that's good okay so far looks good let's see how it will look a few yellow wait for this to dry and then maybe a little brown let's try some browns in it especially we have where we have the mountains to give a little cover coverage on the mountain effect so they won't show much Move this light from here so okay so let's wait for this to dry and then we will come back again can add fuel just in the water as a I think I can just clean my brush and take a dry brush. Okay, here I have a completely dry flat brush. There is no water in it. And I'm just trying to remove the extra pigments from here. Can you see that? This is called lifting the color technique where you can just take a clean flat brush and lift some of the colors from the paper and just remove it. If you are using the right quality of the paper, definitely you will be able to achieve this lifting technique. If it's a normal school supply watercolor paper or less than 300 GSM, you might not be able to get this because the paper will dry very fast and you won't be able to work afterwards. So this is the beauty that if you're using the high quality watercolor paper, you will be able to work Go back, fix your mistakes, like over here, the color was too much, but see, I am just trying to, this is just a clean, without any water, clean brush, and I'm just lifting my color from the paper. So on top of it, if I need, I can add more color. Let me remove this all. Perfect. So let's wait for another 15, 20 minutes, then come back to this painting and let's finish the painting now. So now you can see that the layers are almost dry. This area is still not dry, but uh, I can still work on the this part. I will be only using the dark colors now, going with a small brush and uh, start working on the details.
Now over here, this is my palette knife and with the help of palette knife, I'm just gonna scratch to give more texture in my tree trunk. And I'm gonna also scratch some of these areas to create more as the bushes effect. Okay, this is completely dry. I should do this before, but I just saw the palette knife in front of me and I thought, let me give some texture with this. So this looks good. If you want, uh, if your paper is dry, you can always add a little bit more color like this. Like for example, like this way and then You can take the palette knife and just scratch. I think this looks good. I should stop here. And uh, the final last thing, I just wanna create a little bit of more um, ripples in the water with a very fine Some blue some oh that's too dark but it's okay let it be okay this one I will just dilute with the water and then good to go Okay, so let's start with our final last touches for our leaves. We will go with a medium sized brush, not very dark, uh, not very big brush. So I will just take some red, less water this time. We don't need a lot of water and we'll just give some effect of the leaves. Just again, dancing in different directions for your brush. Some red, some yellow, orange. So I'll just first add some reds. your brush take some yellow okay, for yellow will be a little difficult for you to show but uh, let's try with orange first because even for orange also the same problem I think for yellow I can add some yellow splatters on top of it Just try to blend them with a little bit of water if you feel they look very solid. I think this looks good. Let's try to wrap up with our final touches, final splatters. Let's take some yellow color, add some splatters, and that's it. We will go with, I'll take some yellow paint, tiny dot of yellow, taking a nice medium sized brush. And let's just do the splatters. You can add some white splatters too, if you want to, but uh, again, your choice. I think this is 
done so i hope you enjoyed the lesson and uh, you will get confident with the practice so don't give up enjoy the process more than copying the what i have show you on screen i really want to see how you have done it and uh, would love to give my feedback if you can share the picture you can always follow me on instagram uh, you can check wild about art co which is our studio page and you can check my account which is bond with brushes and i would love to have your feedback don't forget to subscribe share and comment below take care everyone see you in the next video